We are back here now on the show to talk about the Cincinnati Bengals and another top five, top three wide receiver in the NFL, that being obviously Jamar Chase. And on Jamar Chase being one of the best receivers in the NFL currently, he has been since really he stepped foot in the NFL right as he was drafted, much like his LSU teammate, Justin Jefferson. As soon as both of them got into the NFL, they've been home run hitting draft picks ultimately because you look at Jamar Chase and what he's been able to produce for the Cincinnati Bengals helping them make a Super Bowl and the partnership that he has with Joe Burrow being one of the more dangerous duos just quarterback to wide receiver in general in the NFL but you look more deeper into his uh into his first three seasons he has reached a thousand yards in each of his first three seasons and since he's been drafted um, he's been able to do that and also just last year when it was all pretty you know pretty rambunctious and just not certain on where the season was going to go for the Cincinnati Bengals last year you look at still what he was able to produce in 2023 over 1200 yards seven touchdowns and 100 receptions nonetheless when Joe Burrow was in and out with injury then ultimately being sidelined for the entire second half of the year with that wrist injury. Jamar Chase still doing what Jamar Chase does ultimately, producing like a wide receiver does, like a wide receiver one does, at an elite level. And that's why we get to this issue now where he's also looking for a contract. But uh, you might compare it to Brandon Ayuk, CeeDee Lamb. But the main difference with Jamar Chase and those two other guys, those two other guys are on their absolute final year of their deals they're on their fifth years technically of their contracts whereas Jamar Chase is only just becoming eligible this offseason to get that extension he is in no way shape or form trying to face a deadline with the Cincinnati Bengals the Bengals don't really have to do it this offseason if they don't want to this is just the first year that Jamar could decide to approach them and try to figure something out best case scenario uh, this off season, if they were to figure out an extension, but like I said, this is his first year of eligibility. But because of that, he is still in his rookie contract, and he is set to make about a million dollars in base salary for 2024. And still, the Cincinnati Bengals still have that fifth year option, like Brandon Ayuk and Ceedee Lamb are on right now, where uh, where Jamar Chase will earn around $21.8 million on that fifth-year option, which the Bengals have already exercised. So if they can't figure out something um, for the remainder of this offseason and even till next offseason, till the end of next offseason, Jamar Chase is still going to technically be on that team because he's still contractually obligated to be there because of that fifth-year option. So the Bengals have nothing but time really on their side. But it becomes a little tricky now and a little bit just awkward, uncomfortable in a sense because Jamar Chase obviously doesn't want to play 2024 on a $1 million base salary. His talents obviously astronomically exceed that price tag for the Cincinnati Bengals. So he hasn't been practicing. He hasn't been practicing or taking part in the actual, you know, hitting the drills and whatnot in the Cincinnati Bengals practice. He's only been there, just present, just sitting on the sidelines, sort of holding in, if you would. And that's the situation he faces now. But head coach Zach Taylor mentioned that um, it's nothing that he is really taking too seriously, it seems like. He didn't say that, but just based on his comments, he says that they're taking it day by day, and they're just going to essentially wait it out, see if anything changes naturally if Jamar just decides to practice because again he is contractually obligated to play or else he will be subject to fines probably come the regular season I don't know for certain if they're doing it right now they might be sort of you know just waving those away just because they know and understand what Jamar's going through wanting a long-term deal but once the regular season starts they're gonna need him out there and I don't think he'll hold out or anything like that because this is the only first year of eligibility. But regardless of that, it is uh, not an ideal situation, not the perfect situation, obviously, because the Bengals will want him out there, will want him, will want him practicing. And just based also on the fact that their owner, Mike Brown, said that, um, that they will do anything necessary to extend Jamar Chase. But he also mentioned how it probably won't happen this off season, it's likely to happen at some point, maybe in the coming off season, or that they're going to revisit it next year at the earliest. So it's not 
you know, facing a good situation for Jamar Chase to potentially get this done as soon as possible. And in all reality, um, the fact that Jamar's not there, you can kind of put up with that in a sense just because he is going to stay healthy, so that's a great thing. But you want him out there just because Joe Burrow's out there taking part in training camp. He was out there for the first time in forever in a preseason game. So you just want him out there to kind of get everything going, make sure everyone's on the right page. Unfortunately, you don't get to do that. But, you know, it's not too big of a concern that you think that it's going to affect Jamar Chase and he's going to drop to like 800, 900 yards because he wasn't there during training camp. And that's not really the issue. Um, it's just the fact that it seems like it's kind of happening pretty early. And in reality, this could carry on for the rest of this offseason, the entire next offseason. And then once you get to the offseason, even after that, the I'm pretty sure the Bengals still have technically a franchise tag option if they want to apply that to Jamar Chase. So I don't think it'll get to that point, obviously, but that's the last, last resort that the Bengals and Jamar Chase could get to. But if I'm Jamar Chase, yeah, I'm holding in. I'm there at practice, but I'm not just taking part in it because I'm still confident that I could still go out there and produce. But the the fact that he's you know holding in right now is a little um, confusing, and I wouldn't do it technically. I understand it, but I don't think I'd do that right now just because really if he waits a whole nother off season, you'd probably expect to get CeeDee Lamb, that extension if you're the Cowboys. You expect Brandon Ayuk to sign a deal as well. So it could benefit Jamar Chase ultimately to wait a whole nother off season at the latest to potentially move that marker a little bit in terms of the wide receiver market. Maybe, I don't think it's crazy that CeeDee Lamb maybe resets the market. You know, I don't think you can name another receiver right now that has the opportunity to do that. If anyone's going to do it, it's CD. I don't think it's going to happen, but he is the one most likely to do it. And say he resets it by a million or two million. It gets 37 per year or something like that. It makes it a little bit better. It grows the pool a little bit more for Jamar Chase for the next year. If he produces numbers like this, at least, which he seems to be doing already pretty easily, it's going to make it a better case for himself to get paid a little bit more. So that's why I really didn't understand too much why he was holding in right now. I can kind of see the logic behind it, but if I'm the Cincinnati Bengals, again, I don't really feel too much pressure trying to extend Jamar Chase right now. Yeah, I want him practicing, but I'm not too stressed about it. You know, he is in the final part of his deal, but it seems like Cincinnati is taking that approach already knowing that time is on their side. So they're not really stressing too much looking into this situation right now. And really, this is a time for, you know, if there was ever going to be a time for an owner like Jerry Jones to say there's no urgency, this would be the time to do it. This would be the perfect situation to say there's no urgency to extend my best receiver, my elite wide receiver that I have on my roster not when he used it with C.D. Lamb, but rather in this situation, knowing that you have at least two more off-seasons to work something out. This is this is the perfect time to use that no urgency comment, but um, that's basically what the situation is for Jamar Chase right now. He may end up, you know, benefiting better because he waits another off-season. You could see why he would want his money now paying Jamar Chase, or if you're Jamar Chase, earning a $1 million salary for all that you do for the Cincinnati Bengals is um is less than ideal obviously for Jamar Chase especially this year when you think about it and how important I would say for the entire team this is because you look at the situation with T Higgins he's probably going to be on that last year of his deal and he's probably going to move on after this because if they're going to pay Jamar Chase I don't think they'll afford or be able to afford T Higgins on another 25 26 million dollar salary per year so it seems like this will be the last year for T Higgins they moved on from Joe Mixon so they're going to need Jamar out there they're going to need him to perform and with all of that writing on this year you look at Jamar and what he's making you know it kind of makes you feel a certain way about like so much is being put into this season if you're Jamar Chase you want to get, you know, validated for, you know, going the extra mile and contributing so much to this year because of how important it is. You still want to have Jamar Chase be fully locked in. And I'm not saying he's not going to go out there and give 100%, but if this year is so important and Jamar's only earning so little, you know, it 
is a little, it seems a little bit odd because of that. But again, the Cincinnati Bengals, if they're going to try and sh show any urgency, I don't think it'd be this offseason. They've mentioned how, you know, important getting this extension is to Jamar Chase and how important that is to them. In comparison to T. Higgins, you see what they say about T. Higgins. I brought it up a few weeks ago now where the owner, Mike Brown, I mentioned, said he would bend over backwards to sign, extend Jamar Chase. But when it came to T. Higgins, he said he gave a more extended answer, a more political answer like, oh, like the pie is only so big. If someone's getting so much, uh, so much percentage of the cap space, we can't have everybody being paid at top of the market price. So very different to what he's saying in regards to Jamar Chase. So that kind of leads you into believe that, yeah, it kind of stinks that you have to wait a whole nother offseason, but you're still in good favors with the organization. Jamar is going to get paid. There's no way they'll even let him sniff the offseason after the next one. So it's going to take a little bit longer. Yeah, you're probably going to have to go out there and perform like this, but it could ultimately benefit Jamar to the greatest benefit in getting an even larger contract if he goes absolutely crazy with Joe Burrow back. It seems like they only make it to AFC Championship games, so th doing all of that this year only benefits Jamar even more. And with this hold-in, wouldn't write too much into it. You know, it is just something that Jamar felt that he needed to do to preserve himself, probably best-case scenario, but it isn't something anywhere close to what Brandon Ayuk or CeeDee Lamb or what the Cowboys are facing in their situations. Those are very different, and those guys are very much running out of time, especially the Cowboys, and figuring out what they're going to do about CeeDee and Dak Prescott as well. And not only that, mentioning that topic, but that is also going to be my next topic that I mentioned that we're going to get into after this break, talking about Michael Parsons and how he says he expects CeeDee Lamb to be there come week one when they're supposed to take on the Cleveland Browns. There's less than three weeks, I want to say exactly 24 days now, until the Cowboys play that week one matchup and still no signs of an extension is close with CeeDee Lamb, but Michael Parsons is pretty confident, so I'm going to get into what he said, why I think it's going to be a little bit tough to get both him and Dak extended in three weeks' time, but stick around and find out more about that topic when we return after this break. 